right, guys, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I don't want you guys having to watch a very long video on this. So in section four, it's all about temperature and volume. And we have this equation, V1 over T1, my initial volume divided by my initial temperature equals my final volume divided by my final temperature. So that's going to be the big equation that we're using through this. And what that means, it's a little bit different than the previous section where it was PV equals PV. These were opposite as pressure increased, volume decreased. Well, when they're dividing like we are, it does the opposite. As one increases, the other increases. So they do the same thing. So knowing that, we're going to answer number one here. And it says select the diagram that shows the new volume of the balloon. So A, if the temperature has changed from 100 to 300 Kelvin, it has increased. So my volume is going to increase to balloon C. On B, the balloon is placed in a freezer. Well, your temperature is lowering, it's getting colder, so your volume is also going to lower. And then on C, the balloon is first warmed and then returned to its starting temperature. So if it's at its starting temperature, it's going to be the same as what you have right now, so B. So the answer should be CAB. On number two, we want to know what's going to happen to the final volume. So I saw a lot of you guys writing pressure or writing things that completely I had, did not say in the notes at all. Um, all I want to know is did, did my volume increase or decrease? That's it. So on A, I have a volume of 505 milliliters. If you look here, I go from 5 degrees Celsius, and body temperature is 37. So if my temperature is increasing, then my volume is going to increase. That's all you had to write on these. Um, or I'm sorry, larger. Just wanted it smaller or larger. So if it's increasing, it is larger. B, the heater used to heat 1,400 liters of air in a hot air balloon is turned off. So you're going from hot, you turn it off, and it's going to get colder. So your temperature is decreasing, which means that your volume will get smaller. Right? You turn the heat off in a hot air balloon, it's going to deflate. And C, a balloon filled with helium at the amusement park is left in a car on a hot day. So it's hot, so that temperature is going to increase in the car, which means that your volume is going to get larger. Okay. On number three, what change in volume occurs when gases for hot air balloons are heated prior to their ascent? Well, all you have to do is see that word heated, and as soon as I see heated, then my volume is going to increase. Number four, on a cold wintry morning, the tires on a car appear flat, and mine, like especially the past few days, I'm gonna have to go check them, because it's been so cold in the morning, when I get in, my tire pressure has kind of alerted me, and I'm like, oh, it's because it's cold out. Um, so how has their air volume changed overnight? So if the temperature dropped, then your volume decreased. So that's what's happening with my tires right now. Number five, a balloon, oh, number five and six are my math problems. So we're going to look at this. A balloon contains 2,500 milliliters of helium. That is my volume at 75 degrees Celsius. Now in the notes I talked to you that you have to add 273. This has to be in Kelvin. Our temperatures have to be in Kelvin. So what this truly equals is 348 Kelvin. So that is my T1. So I've got V1 and I have T1, so I'm gonna put 2500 over 348 equals, and I have a new temperature, but I have to add 273 to that. I have to change it to Kelvin. So it's gonna be 328. So I'm going to put that on bottom here, and I need my new volume. So when you have a problem like this, you're going to cross multiply. 2,500 times 328, and you always just divide by what is left over. So you're going to divide by 348. So 2,500, multiply by 328, divide by 348, and your answer should be 2,356 milliliters is your new volume. Now on B, same thing, we're using this initial volume, 2,500. I've got my initial temperature. Now this one I do not need to change. They give it to me in Kelvin, so I'm going to keep it at 680. need to find my new volume. I'm going to take 2,500, multiply by 680, divide by 348, and your answer is 4,885 milliliters is your new volume, which 
makes sense, right? My temperature increased, my volume should also increase. Same over here on A. Um, now on number six, I'm going to do this in blue here. A gas has a volume, so here is my initial volume. Here is my initial temperature. Now it's zero. We need to turn this into Kelvin. Zero plus 273. That's going to be 273 Kelvin. What final temperature in degrees Celsius? Degrees Celsius is needed to, uh, to cause the volume of the gas to change to the following. So this is my V2. All right, so I'm going to go V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. I need my new temperature. So I'm going to take 10 times 273 and divide by 4, and that is going to equal 682.5 Kelvin, right? This is in Kelvin. So my answer is in Kelvin. Now, if you want Celsius, you are going to multiply 273, and they don't always ask for this. Sometimes you can just leave your answer in that. They ask for Celsius. So I'm going to subtract 273, and that is 409.5 degrees Celsius. All right? All right, now this one over here. If you look, I have liters, and I have milliliters. So some of you turned in your homework already. You, I think you did everything right. You just didn't switch this to liters. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do liters. So to get to liters, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So this is 1.2 liters. And I did that because milli is a thousandth, which means I'm going to move my decimal point three spots. Now that I have this, I can say, okay, I'm going to take my V1 over my T1. And my new volume is 1.2, and I need my new temperature. So I'm going to take 1.2 times 273 divided by 4. My answer is going to be 81.9. That is Kelvin. They want Celsius. So if I subtract 273 from that, that is negative 191.1 degrees Celsius. Very cold. All right, so that's how you do those. If you guys are struggling with anything, because I'm going to tell you right away, the next section is very, very similar to this right here. So if you need any help at all, let me know. Um, I will. We'll figure out any way I can to help you, whether it's coming in or if you need to do Zoom or, or whatever you want to do. Just let me know. Have a great Thanksgiving break. See ya.